Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1970 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Cleveland Indians and the Seattle Pilots at Brainiac Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is Sam McDowell, whose record is 16-7 and with a 3.35 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Dennis Leonard, whose record is 1-3 with a 7.56 ERA. Okay, everybody, we made it. We are sitting here with game 162 to play. Uh, we're going to wrap up the season today. Uh, we will also do the duck race where we'll give away all of our prizes. We'll cover that in a moment. And uh, then tomorrow, to put a cap on this sim series, uh, we'll have the final video in which we will uh, play the playoffs. We'll go one day at a time. It goes pretty quickly because really all you have is the league championship and then the world series so we can complete that quickly we'll take a look at the league leaders and then we will um take a look at our expiring contracts because the game will force us to make a decision on every player that is either going to arbitration or they're becoming a free agent we'll get the first opportunity to sign them and if not then they go to free agency um, i also want to thank uh, Don T for reminding me that after you finish the season um, and after the World Series, there is an opportunity to make trades. I don't think we have anything of value, but maybe we can get some money from somebody. So I, I'll look into that um, on my own time uh, prior to the actual um, uh, the World Series getting started. So I know most of you are here to see this series wrap up, but in addition to that, uh, you want to know if you are going to win the duck race or not. And we will do the duck race uh, during the seventh inning stretch today. We've already got our uh, final 12 contestants. They're all right here. Uh, when the time comes, we'll shuffle this one time, and I'll show you what the prizes are uh, for the last time before we uh, uh, complete the uh, duck race for the giveaway. Uh, good news is I am receiving the, the grand prize uh, today in the mail, so we will have that in time and I can get everybody's prize out um, as soon as possible. So uh, let's, there we go, Wait, let me get out of there. So let's go ahead and get started with today's ball game. We'll wrap up this season. I'm excited uh, to get started with the uh, 1985 Detroit Tigers season, playing the pilot season and the Tigers season at the same time. Uh, it kind of confuses me during the uh, the pregame uh, uh, the dialogue there. I almost said Tigers a couple of times. And after today's game, we will have the opening day for the Detroit Tigers uh, 1985 sim. So uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be up later tonight. Now we've got Dennis Leonard, our number five starter, making his last start. I don't expect him to go long. He hasn't been very good this year. Uh, I'm sure that he will start next year in single A. All the bullpen is available, that's the good news. And then we're facing a left-hander in Sam McDowell. So it's our lineup versus lefties. Our first, uh, let's see, who do we have here? Yeah, A.G., Pepitone, Johnson, and Cruz are all listed as tired. Uh, we're gonna play them, and like uh, most final games of the season, around the fifth inning, we start pulling the starters and getting some of the backups in there for an opportunity to get in at bat or at least play defense and that'll happen today. So there's our lineup for game 162. Let's go ahead and do the uh, lineup for t today for the Cleveland Indians. Batting leadoff in right field is Russ Nagelson. Batting second at third base is Bob Bailey. Batting third at second base is Billy Parker. Batting cleanup playing first base is Norm Cash. Batting fifth in left field is John Lowenstein. Batting sixth in center field is Jose Cardinal. Batting seventh and catching is Ken Suarez. Batting eighth at shortstop is Zoilo Rosales. And batting ninth is the pitcher Sam McDowell. We'll take a quick look at Dennis Leonard. This is his sixth start of the season. He's one and three with a 7.56 ERA, more walks and strikeouts 
Opponents are betting 339 against him. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 49%. The only good pitch he has, at least at the moment, is the fastball rated in 81. Overall rated in 80. The 19, actually 20-year-old Dennis Leonard uh, will make, uh, sorry, will go to arbitration after the 1973 season. Looking at his log, there's his three consecutive losses. Included is the game against Cleveland. The last time he faced him, in which he did not get one single out. He gave up six runs, walked three. Um, in his previous start against Detroit, he went three innings, giving up three runs on four hits, and we yanked him after 52 pitches. So if he can give us three or four innings today, that'll be all that uh, I expect from him. We'll take a look at our defense. As usual, solid everywhere except for second base with Gary Sutherland getting the start instead of Van Kelly since we are facing a lefty. This could be Sutherland's last game as a pilot. Behind the plate is Sanguian. Everywhere else we got it covered. Okay, let's kick off the final game of the season. Russ Nagelson leading off. Nagelson <laughs> walks <laughs> to start the ball game. This is, you know, honestly, a loss is, is great. The one thing we do have on the line is that we could potentially get the number three pick with a loss today. We're not going out there trying to lose, but if that's what happens, I'm going to be okay with it. Bob Bailey flies out to center field, and then Leonard walks Parker. Runner on first and second, one down for Norm Cash, sitting on 30 home runs. And he's going to bloop it into left center field. That's going to get a run in as Nagelson scores from second. Parker goes to third, one nothing, Cleveland. You know, we will pull the infield in. Probably a little early in a ball game to do that. We could play back and try to get a double play. But without Kelly in there, who's our best double play guy, uh, maybe we just try to prevent a run. There we go. That's going to pay off as Lowenstein grounds out to first. Parker holds. Cash goes to second. And with one good pitch, we can get out of this. Here's Jose Cardinal. Looks like he's going to win the stolen base title as he hits a grounder to second and a two errors, and that's the ball game right there. So, well, we can just sort of play it out. There we go. So three nothing, and we're done. We can just kind of breeze through this game. Uh, we will take a look at our lineup though. Batting leadoff in center field is Tommy Ag. Batting second at second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting third in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting cleanup at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in left field is Jose Cruz. Batting sixth at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting 7th and catching is Manny Sanguian. Batting 8th at shortstop is Jerry Devannon and the pitcher Leonard in the number 9 spot. Here's Sam McDowell going for a career-high 17 wins. He's making his 38th start, 16-7 and seven with a 335 ERA, 223 strikeouts and 284 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents are batting 218 against him. Wow, look at 13 hit batters, 18 wild pitches. A couple of games, two shutouts. His fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 42.1%. He's got four pitches in his arsenal, the fastball being his out pitch rated in 89. A hard curve rated in 81. Overall rated in 80. The 28-year-old left-hander is a free agent after the uh, 1973 season. Here's his log. He went seven and two-thirds against us back on September 19th, getting the win. And then in his previous start against Boston, he went seven, giving up only two runs in a no decision. Let's look at the Indians' defense. Uh, this is their everyday lineup, too. So they have all the regulars in there. The right side of the infield, all below league average. Uh, actually, the right side of the diamond, if you throw in there, Nagelson in right field. But Suarez behind the plate. Uh, the best defensive catcher in the American League. Okay, Sam McDowell, lefty, facing Tommy Ag. 
AG's had a good year as he flies out to center. After today's ball game, on the community page here, uh, the poll will be up for you to vote on the team MVP. It's going to come down to AG, Pepitone, and Johnson. I mean, you can see the peripheral numbers just right here. I guess I could throw in Cruz, but Cruz didn't even play half a season, so it's tough to include him as the MVP. No pitchers will qualify for that as we have a 1-2-3 inning, as you might expect. So we go to the top of the second. Let's see if Leonard can give us something here. Casales with a ground ball to second. Sutherland makes the play. Sam McDowell. All the ground balls go into Sutherland. Really testing him here as we want the season to end as quickly as possible. There's the third walk for Leonard. Will there be a two-out rally as usual? Yeah, there'll be a two-out rally. Let's just do it. There we go. That'll get a run in. Maybe two. Four to nothing. And then Cash pops out. So four walks by Leonard in a couple of hits. The game is going as planned. We'll bring in Darren Johnson. He strikes out. Jose Cruz. Hasn't had a hit in days and days. We've watched his batting average go down. Rollins walks. And Manny Sangian grounds out. We may be no hit today. We got four batters that are listed as tired, and everybody else is pretty pathetic at this point. This will be the final inning for Leonard. We do not want him to bat. There's an infield single. Great job game. Jose Cardinal. A line drive to first. Lowenstein gets back. Suarez. A line drive. And Zoilo flies out to right. Well, we didn't help Leonard at all. He didn't get any run support. We go to the bottom of the third. Devannon, of course, it's always the number eight or nine hitter that gets the first hit. Pretty much guaranteed Leonard coming out of the ball game. It's a good thing we didn't pull him off the mound. He would get a lot of boos. So, who are we going to put in here that we probably won't see again for a while? I guess Greg Pryor deserves an opportunity. No, not Pryor. Let's do Remy Hermoso. Runner on first, nobody out. And a base. Hit. It's all the schlubs. The schlubs will get hits. As Devannon's out at third. This is a brutal. This is going to be a brutal, brutal ball game. Oh, Tommy Agee gets two. The 16th home run of the year. 4-2 Cleveland. Gary Sutherland, I, I'm feeling like he's pretty much gone. There's two walks now for McDowell this inning. Joey Pep, he wants that 30th home run. It's going to be tough today against the lefty. He strikes out, and Darren Johnson does not strike out. That's a surprise. He will fly out. Uh, just for information purposes, we'll look at the... Um, league leaders tomorrow but Tony Solita of the Yankees is sitting at 49 he has a chance to get 50 um, look at Jack DeLauro in there try to get a couple outs we haven't pitched him in quite a while he's been horrible and will likely be gone of course a left-hander gets a hit against the lefty because that's the way the game is designed We'll take out uh, DeLauro, bring in Bucky. Bucky pitched five innings in his last appearance. Trying to get everybody in there for an out or two, if possible. There's a ground ball to third and the double play. Good job. Go to the bottom of the fourth. Jose Cruz to lead it off. An infield single. Great. Let's hit and run. Since we have uh, Rich Rollins up. His hit and run is an 88, solid, and a base hit. 
We've got a little rally going here, first and third. Nobody out. Manny Sagan's even better at hitting and running. He has a 94. So with first and third and less than two outs, you always want to try to hit and run if you can. Infield single. This game blows. Even after 162 games, it still sucks so bad. You get two infield singles in the same inning. One to a great defensive third baseman and one to a terrible first baseman. And it's the catcher. It's so dumb. All right, it's first and second. Nobody out. Here is Jerry Devannon. Don't forget, in the uh, seventh inning stretch, I'm sure that's why you're here. We, we're giving away some prizes. There's a double play. We'll take out Bucky. And... Um, Let's bring in Boca Bella. Why not? He is two for four on the season. We'll take a walk. That'll bring up Tommy Agee. He just went deep. Now he's going to strike out, right? Yeah, two, two. So we go to the top of the fifth, down a run. We have second and third and nobody out. I'm sorry, first and third and nobody out. And we could not score. Okay, um, so Boca Bella will come out for a left-hander. My name is Earl. Oh, I should thank all the celebrities that contributed this year. We have Owen Wilson. Wow. Wow, Mater. Uh, we should thank uh, Judge Smale from, <laughs> from County Chef. Oh, Billy. Billy, 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 Billy. <laughs> I mean, we had some fun this year. You have to have some fun with it, how terrible this game is designed. It really is probably the worst sim game I've ever played. Um, all you can do is laugh so you don't cry. Out comes Earl. We're going to bring in Fred Gladding. Total garbage Gladding was this year. And yet we've given him 60 innings of work. Uh, caught stealing, not a strikeout. <laughs> Jose Cardinal trying to up that total. All right, this is the fifth inning. So um, after uh, after this, uh, what two, three? Uh, we'll get through these four batters, and then we will start subbing out people. Sutherland gets a base hit. That's a good way to end his season. He's been terrible. That gets him up to two ninety. That keeps him in a reasonable range, and it is a double. Sutherland led the team in doubles last year with 20. He manages to get 15. There's his final line score. Yeah, over a 700 OPS from a middle infielder in the 70s, that's pretty good. Joe Pepitone, his batting average versus lefties dropped all the way down to 200. That's gonna be deep enough to get Sutherland to third. All the way to the wall. They're pulling the infield in. We're going to ask for a sack fly. If Darren Johnson could hit a home run, that would be great. But they're pulling the infield in, so this is an automatic out, no matter what happens here. Oh, I guess I'm wrong. Sutherland will tag and score, and the game is tied. Great job by Johnson. That'll be his final at bat. He finishes the year with 34 home runs, 95 RBI. Um, and an 848 slugging percentage, which is the best? No. His all-star year of 65 was better. And Jose Cruz. I get, I'm glad we get to get all these guys one more at bat. And Cruz will pop out. So we managed to come back and tie it. And now we're going to do a... Oh! Okay. Well, the game is stupid. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Come on, this is dumb. Let's take the lead and... I don't know, I've said get a picture of the win, but I don't remember who the last guy was. This is gladding. And the errors, I mean, this game is glitched into baseball mogul mode and there's nothing we can do to stop it. We'll take the lead. There's a grumble to third. Can we get another error? Yeah, those errors happened just so that we could get that lead. Um, all right, we got a lot of work to do here. Let's... Um, in this top of the sixth inning, we're going to take out Sanguian. We're going to bring in the Rip. 
well deserved at first base we'll bring in Gary Holman second base of course will be Van Kelly third base will be Aurelio Jerry Devannon will come out at short and it'll be Belanger left field um, will be Pointer Center field, of course, is Bosch. Right field will be Johnny Jeter. And we'll bring in a new pitcher. Gladding will leave. We got 60 innings. Probably should never have gotten to 60. Ray Ray Peters coming in. And he will face Ken Suarez. 0-2. Fly ball to left. Pointer making the catch. Zoilo Versalis. I don't know, like, <laughs> if you have a 70-win season and you, um, you're you at home for the final game and you'll, you pull all your players like that, I'm not sure that they're going to be applauding. <laughs> There's really... I'm not sure... Yeah, as Peters walks the pitcher because he has to to get to the lefty. Yeah, this is going to be a couple runs here to tie it up and maybe get ahead. Yeah, this is good. This is good stuff from the game. This is all the two out rally. Oh, then a strikeout to get out of the inning. Indians have not scored since the second. All right, Peters coming up. I guess Jerry Justad will come in and get a pinch hit. He's 0 for three on the year. September call-up, of course. And he will finish the year without a hit. Here's Donnie Bosch. Pretty bad season for him, considering what he gave us last year. And Van Kelly been a, was, you know, a contributor. He was great defensively until the final month, and then all of a sudden the game switched gears with him. And he made a ton of errors. Mostly because that's what the game called for. Okay, let's start getting in some of the better players. As Bill Edgerton comes in. After this half inning, we have the duck race, so get ready. Norm Cash leading it off. There's a base hit. Good job, game. Leadoff man is on. John Lowenstein. Hey, there we go. Two lefties getting hits. That's exactly what we would expect to happen. Off of a lefty, because why not? Let's bring in the gerb. Can he get us out of it? Of course not. We'll pull the infield in, but it don't matter. We're going to go, what, five, six runs, probably? There's a ground ball to short. A fielder's choice. Wait, what? Ken Suarez was safe because he decided to go home, and he was safe anyway. Wow, this game blows. Absolutely blows. What a garbage piece of shit this game is. Richie Scheinblum coming in. They've already scored. We're going to play back, try to get a double play. That's not going to happen, but we got to give it a try. Yeah, so this game will be end with a loss. I guess that's probably the way we wanted it. Let's just keep it going. I hate to see Ron Herbal's good season end this way, but it is what it is. So the game f f f screws this over for the 80th time this year. Chuck Mackable's coming in. He's not even have a picture. Oh, it's time for the um, I almost started to play. Hey, it's time for the duck race. That's why you guys are here today. Let's go ahead and bring this to super full screen. Okay, let's go over the prizes one last time so you know what you're getting. Uh, the third place winner for today's ball game will get this 1969 Topps Aurelio Rodriguez rookie card in which it depicts the actual bat boy for the California. Aurelio Rodriguez. A pretty famous error card in which... Um, 
Uh, it's highly collectible. It's in pretty good shape on the front. We showed you the backside before where it looks like someone had put it in a scrapbook. There's a little bit of like some kind of a um, residue on the back in four little corners. But all in all, a great prize and definitely something fun to show at, uh, you know, little have your guests come over and you know, show them your, your collectibles. That's a, a pretty cool card. So that's for the third place winner. The second place winner for today will get a 2012 Boog Powell Panini Golden Age autograph card. Boog Powell was the American League MVP in the 1970 season. And uh, this autograph card, pretty sweet. I hope uh, this, everyone is satisfied with a Boog Powell autograph. Not in the Hall of Fame, but the Hall of Very Good. And then the grand prize, here we go. First place in this duck race, you will get this 2018 Diamond Kings Diamond Cuts Cut Signature of Bobby, the shot heard round the world Thompson of the New York Giants, one of the most famous home runs in the history of baseball. This is a cut signature of a check from Bobby Thompson's estate. They only made 25 of these. There's, this is number 10 of 25. A really amazing piece of uh, memorabilia. I'm incredibly happy to give something this nice away. Uh, this is uh, one of the better prizes we've given away. We've given away Mickey Mantle autographs, um, Raleigh Fingers, Burt Blylev, and George Brett autographs. I mean, we've given away some really high-end stuff on this channel. And this is definitely right up there with the best of it. Um, and uh, it's time now to give this these great prizes away. We've got 12 contestants, and before we start, we're going to shuffle it one time. So we're going to shuffle it once as it's thinking about it. Take a moment and try to locate your duck and your costume. Let's go from the bottom up here. Al B uh, didn't actually switch. He's still in the same spot in the old regular duck. And then I believe this is Shane M with the Mohawk duck. Number three here is Lance B uh, with a what I assume is also a regular duck. Then the fourth position is Ethan P wearing, <laughs> I don't know, what, some kind of S&M outfit. I don't know what that is. He's got a whole costume over him. Maybe like an alien. I don't know what that's supposed to be. We got Dave K with a witch duck. Lying dog is actually a bee duck. Thomas D. looks like a Donald Trump duck. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas D. Uh, Julio L. is a polka dot duck. We got James K. as a purple uh, squiggly lined duck. Don T.'s got his winter cap on. I think it was Don T. that maybe said that <laughs> the hat slowed him down last time. Uh, we got Freddie C. as another masked duck of some t sort. And John M., is a purple striped duck. So there are the 12 participants for the duck race today. We have 1.45 on the clock. That is our standard time for this uh, race. And we are ready to get it going. Here we go. We're going to count down from three. I'm going to hit the start button, and we will know who the big winner is in a minute and 45 seconds. Let's go. Three, two, one. Quack. Okay, it looks like John M. at the top, taking an early lead with Lying Dog, making a run for it up the middle. After a minute and 30 sec uh, well, 15 seconds gone by, Lying Dog's taking an early lead. We kind of know that usually if you get an early lead, it's going to be someone coming from behind, so you're going to want to hope you can fall back to the pack. Don T. moving up. That, that hat's not slowing him down. There's James K. in the purple squiggly line duck. Freddie C. is way back in the back. Uh, that's maybe a good sign as he's making a little bit of a run here with one minute to go. John M. and Lying Dog are kind of running away with it. Al B. coming back to the pack. Here comes Freddie C. with Thomas D. running up the middle. We got 45 seconds to go right now. 
Don T dropped all the way to the back. So did Ethan P. Lance B's way back there. Shane M. Hanging with the uh, middle pack of the group. 35 seconds to go. Here's Freddie C. Thomas D. as <laughs> Donald Trump making a little bit of a run. I feel like Don T is going to be the one that's going to make a run here real quick as we're coming to the final 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. Freddie C. Da, uh, Tom D is dropping back Julio L kind of running away with it here someone's going to blast 10, 9, 8 seconds to go here comes the pack, oh no, here comes Thomas D, 4, 3 2, 1, Thomas D making a run and Thomas D will win the grand prize congratulations to Thomas D we're going to take a look here at the final three uh, Thomas D is the winner. He will get the uh, cut signature of Bobby Thompson. Congratulations, Tom. Uh, then John M, second place prize of the Boog Powell autograph. Third place goes to Lance B. He gets the Aurelio Rodriguez rookie card. Then we finish up with Julio L just outside the top three. James K, Shane M, Al B, Freddie C, after leading for such a long time, falls to eighth, Ethan B, Lying Dog, Dave K, Adanti, who was right up there, finishes last. I guess it was the hat. Um, so congratulations to uh, the three of you. My email will be in the comments below. Please email me your address, even if you've won at one point before. Uh, please email me your address again. I don't keep anybody's personal information, and we will get those prizes out right away. Okay, fantastic. Let's finish up this frickin' season. I'm so frustrated. Uh, we got Johnny Jeter leading off the bottom of the seventh against Chuck McAmel. Oh, two count to Jeter. I think Jeter's making a pretty good case to be our fourth outfielder next year. He's got a home run. He's batting 310 in limited duty, so that was nice. He grounds out, so does Holman. Two outs. Here's Aaron Pointer. And he might get to hit. There we go. There's Pointer's first hit of the year. Do we want to go to, for two? Hell yeah, we do. we got nothing to lose. And Pointer is out at second. That's the second base runner thrown out on the base path. Okay. We go to the top of the eighth inning. We've only got lefties available. So we're going to try to get uh, Ramon and then Denny Riddleberger in there to wrap this game up. Ramon Hernandez is kind of falling apart down the stretch like everybody else has, but he had a good season, especially considering that he was not very good uh, based on his ratings. Great job, game. This is just brilliant programming. Yep, bases are loaded again. Ground ball to short. Can we get a double play, please? Thank you. All right, here we go. Aurelio Rodriguez leading it off. It's Arriga Rodriguez, Dalrymple, and Belanger. I'm assuming Rodriguez will be the everyday starting third baseman next year. He takes a walk because that's all the game's got left to offer. Here's Dalrymple. I think I'll resign him, and he'll be... Um, our backup catcher once again. Rodriguez goes to second on a wild pitch. It, it isn't baseball mogul unless you get a wild pitch, a balk, or a pass ball in every single game. 3-1 count to Dalrymple and another freaking walk. Wouldn't it be something if Mark Belanger with his 64 power, one of the lowest power ratings I think I've ever seen in this game, hits a three-run home run to give us the lead. Bel Belanger's definitely gone. We, he will not be resigned. Strikes out. Yeah, he's a garbage. Um, okay, here we go. Greg Pryor. The only guy from our very first draft to get called up. He's batting 0-59. He's been terrible. I wanted to get him 50 at bats, but it just wasn't going to happen. He's got nothing. Yeah, and Bosch. Yeah, so you walk two, you strike out three. Great job, game. Brilliant, brilliant programming. We go to the top of the ninth inning. 
Um, we're going to bring in Denny Riddleberger. Not an MVP, but we could not do this without him. Uh, the only pitcher we have of any quality. And, of course, he walks the first guy because everybody's got to get their numbers now. Riddleberger walks the guy. Nagelson flies out. Uh, Bailey, ground ball. Can we get a double play and end it? Yes. Great. Okay, we're down to the final three outs. It's going to be Kelly, Jeter, and Holman. They're bringing in the lefty, Mike Paul, a guy we have not... I don't recall seeing this year, so we'll take a look at him real quick. Um, pretty good rating. Okay, here we go. Van Kelly, final at-bat of the year. And, of course, the game has to walk him. Why wouldn't he? Kelly on first for Johnny Jeter. Another walk. God, this game sucks so hard. Do we have anybody left on the bench? Because I don't want to bat a lefty here if I got a righty. Oh, we got Duffy Dyer. We'll get D Dyer in there instead of Holman. Bring in a righty to face a lefty. This could be a double play <laughs> in the ball game. Oh, no, it's, there's no outs yet. Okay, Duffy Dyer. He's batting 227. He's got a few at-bats this year. Oh, a base hit. Well, Kelly score probably not, right? Yeah, because the game would never do that in a million years. Um, yeah, we just got to let Pointer swing away. A Grand Slam walk-off would be something. Pointer has 78 power, so it is likely. And uh, the one thing that I did wrong this year, the, um, and I regret it, is having the alleys be in at 350. I definitely wanted to have some offense for this team. I just didn't know it would... Um, I didn't consider how adversely it would affect us as a pitching staff. There's a line drive to the left, and it falls in for a hit. Um, the game is tied, and we have a chance to walk it off and definitely have the fifth draft pick instead of the third. Will it be Aurelio Rodriguez? I can't even get excited. I'm so sorry. Rodriguez strikes out. We have nobody left on the, in the bullpen <laughs> or um, on the bench. So, I mean, come on. This is we got to make something happen here. Come on, Rimp. Yeah, Rimp takes a walk. That's a third batter walk this inning. Oh, no. It's up to Belanger. This is the worst batter to have in this situation. How about an infield? No, okay. If this were like live betting, I would bet on an infield single or a pass ball walk or balk. That would be like that would be the two um, separate bets I would try to make here. O2. Oh, that's more accurate. Yeah, that's actually should have been my bet. I would have lost the house on that. Well, I guess we got to bring in Steve Whitaker. He's all we got left. Lefty on lefty violence. Here's the season one one, and we win the ball game. That's just dumb. 8-7, to seven, Pilots win, handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy steaks. Well, I mean, come on. That's just dumb. We finished 71-91. and 91. Let's take a look at the standings. Final standings. There's the National League, first of all. Uh, the Dodgers won 102 games. That's tough on Houston, who won 97. San Diego lost 114. No big surprise there. Montreal did not lose 100. So San Diego and Montreal will have picks above us. And with our 71, thanks to Chicago winning, thank you, we will have the third or the fourth pick. So it just depends on how the game sets, you know. Baltimore will win the American League East. Oakland wins the American League West. Uh, by nine games. That's pretty spectacular. We'll look at the final headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Somebody named Jim Kremel gave up three hits. Mike Derrick bashes two home runs for the Tigers. Al Downing holds the Twins to three hits. And that's it. Okay, transactions. Oh, there's all the uh, the leaders. Uh, we don't want to see that. Um, oh, Joe Torre 
Wait, did we already know that? Oh, yeah, Tory got injured, and he was one point below Rod Carew for the batting title. While Mickey Lowich broke his neck. That's great. On the 29th. And there's your home run leader, Tony Solita, which is no surprise. He did not get 50. So we're not going to spoil it for everybody else. Um, we'll do the um, league leader video tomorrow. Um, so that's it. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. We'll wrap this season up. Thank you to, so much to all of you that dedicated even a minute of your time to watching this goofball franchise that I've put together. Uh, I mean, I really do enjoy doing this. I, I know that I get frustrated with the game because it is garbage, but uh, all in all, I love it. I keep coming back to it. Um, <laughs> look at the box score. Oh, man. Um, player of the game. Is This is a tough call. Uh, we did we did get a home run from Tommy Ag. I guess we got, we're going to give it to um, Aaron Pointer though. Did he get the play? Uh, did he get the game-winning RBI? No, it was Whitaker, of course. Let's give it to Aaron Pointer, who came in. He got two hits and two at bats. Uh, tried to make the team for next year, and two RBI. Ag did hit the home run, but as usual, Ag doesn't really do much to help us win uh, the ball game when when it matters. Um, how many hits did we get from backups in this game? I always like to look at that, especially because it's such a big part of winning uh, when the game doesn't let you get let your uh, regulars get hit. So we had one, two. Wait, I'm missing three, four. Okay, so we had four hits from backups, which ended up being, you know, forty percent or so of our total hits today. Great job, game. How many walks? Let's take a look at this. We walked 12, and they walked 9. Again, great job, game. Well-programmed. Um, we only had three strikeouts, and we still won the ball game. Gary Sutherland had a huge, costly error, but we had so many double plays. Um, a lot of pitchers here you're probably never going to see again. Denny Riddleberger... Got, gets his eighth win. That might actually lead the team in wins. Uh, that's amazing. Mike Paul will take the loss because he had to. The game wasn't going to go into extra innings. That'll do it. Thank you guys so much. As so many of you uh, to thank, I, I guess it's a, impossible for me to give each one of you an individual um, thanks. But you know who you are. And uh, I'm glad to see this season come to rest. We're going to wrap it up tomorrow with the final video. Uh, where we will uh, uh, take a look at the um, league leaders and we'll do the uh, uh, signings for the pilots uh, of our own players. And then that will put it to its final resting place until we come back for 1971, in which we'll have all new baseball cards. The 1971 uh, cards will be up. I will, I will be able to manipulate them to look like uh, the 1971 uh players are on the right teams. That'll be fun. That's going to be a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we'll come back with spring training uh, a at the end of the uh, regular baseball season in real life. So if we don't see you tomorrow for the final video, um, we'll be back in the fall for that. Or please feel free to jump in and, and watch the 1985 Detroit Tigers season replay, of which will be the sixth and final season. Uh, opening date will be later tonight. Uh, and for the winners of the uh, giveaway, please uh, make sure you email me your address uh, at the email posted in the uh, comments below. That'll do it. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day.